Okay, we are recording. Don't forget about having somebody take minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Stephanie. Is everybody here that we're expecting? Yeah, looks like it. Great. Yes. Um, another benefit of an electric vehicle is that you don't feel guilty about sitting in the car with it on. <laughs> Uh, in the parking lot to plug in your phone. Um, okay, hi everybody. Um, I think first item right is review of minutes from last time and it sounds like Jesse, you're taking minutes this time, correct? I think that was a head nod. Okay, great. Um, I didn't see that. Yeah, Jesse, you're- Sorry, yes, ready. I'm on it. <clears throat> Great, so did anybody have any comments or edits to the minutes from our meeting that was quite a while ago? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a couple. Um, my name is spelled wrong, so you can correct me. <laughs> uh -oh. Sorry about that, Pasu, I will. No, no worries. And then I was wondering if uh, section nine can be moved up to section three F because it flows better. Um, we had the voting for uh, the solar bylaw working group mm -hmm. separated out. Yeah, we did do it at the end after we discussed yeah. other things, but it, yeah, it felt like it was not going to be there as I was reading through, and then it was there at the end. So if it's minutes, I think it could just be plugged under section three. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Anybody else? It's good. So we okay. I'll, I okay, so that we accept the minutes, approve the minutes. <coughs> Someone second it. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, I'll give a roll call vote. So just give me one second here. Okay, um, Jesse, make sure you mute. I mean, unmute. Uh, Rose? Yes. Selman? Abstain. Uh, Raghavan? Yes. Allison? Yes. Breger? Yes. Roof? Yes. Goldner. Yes. Okay. Minutes approved. No, oh, I don't think you called me. But oh, I'm sorry. Yes. That's <laughs> because I can't see you. Sorry, Laura. Drucker. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. No, okay. Now right. the minutes are officially approved. Okay, great. So then next up, I think, is public comment. Do, if, do we have any public? Uh, we do. Let me just... Uh, so I'm going to allow Tony Cunningham to speak. Tony, you have three minutes. Thank you, Tony Cunningham, Owen Drive. Um, I sent an email yesterday to Stephanie, Duane, and Jesse regarding two time-sensitive energy and climate action-related aspects of the elementary school building project that this committee may want to consider advocating for. And the first is whether the school should be a climate resilience hub for the town, potentially serving as an emergency shelter. I believe one of the strategies in the CARP recommends identifying a potential hub, including a feasibility study of potential sites and facility upgrades that would be necessary to develop successful resilience hubs. And the second is if this committee would want to recommend a ground source heating and cooling system over air source for the new school, so be, it would be excellent if this committee could discuss what role, if any, it could play in the school building project as it relates to climate action. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Great, thanks, Tony. Any, anybody else, Stephanie? Um, no one else has their hand raised. Okay, um, folks, we'll give you a second if you wanna raise your hand. Um, also usually do another public comment um, at the end of the meeting. Okay. No one else has raised their hand. Okay. Well, with that, then I think we can move on to the next item, which 
I believe is staff updates, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, where to begin? Okay, so the um, solar landfill fencing is almost complete on the south landfill. Uh, the the uh, north landfill development with the actual array will be mechanically complete by I think next week. So ostensibly it could go online by the end of the month, but that all depends on Eversource and it's not very likely, um, but it will be ready for that at some point at the point at which Eversource de decides to sort of turn it on. So very exciting that that project is almost completed. Um, the South Landfill abutters are, we're working with them right now just regarding that last piece of fencing that needs to be installed to protect the grasshopper sparrow. So that's moving along. Um, I am working on the Mass CEC grant with uh, with Family Outreach of Amherst. I think we finally come to <laughs> to an agreement of that Family Outreach can pay the the community captains. So that's all just transpired pretty much today. I've had a lot of communication back and forth with Mass CEC and with Family Outreach. So I think we'll finally get all the contracts together and finalized for that effort. So that's moving forward. The Fort River Farm Community Garden will be launching at the beginning of June. So I will give you more information about the community garden that is being developed there. There's been a, an incredible garden circle of folks. We're working with the Healthy Hampshire Initiative under the um, Collaborative for Educational Services out of Northampton. They've been a fantastic partner, really enabled us to, uh, we've got a, a well in there now, a Sandpoint well that was installed by one of our volunteers yesterday. She was quite pleased and we were all thrilled to actually have water at the site. So it's been a really incredible process, but that will have 42, I'm sorry, 32 10 by 10 in-ground plots. And there are 12 raised beds that will be available for folks. So we're just talking about how to assign the plots and we wanna give priority to, um, to people who are apartment dwellers and also um, BIPOC members as well. So, um, so it's been a really exciting process. So, so those things are moving along quite quickly and that's everything that's at the top of my head right now. I have a question. Um, June is late for some plantings. Is it possible for um, some of the assigning of plots to start? That, well, we, we, can, we, can, we can assign the plots um, earlier, but people can't actually use the site yet because it's a, there's a lot of work to be done out there. We're just getting it going. This is the first season. So anyone with an in-ground plot is going to have a lot of work to do to really make it a really viable, um, productive growing space. Um, right. It's just because of the nature of the site and it's the first year. So mm -hmm. people will be investing a lot in their, in their plots this year. Um, but there are plots available at the Amethyst Brook community garden site. So if people are interested, they can contact Angela Mills in the town manager's office. And those are ready. Those have been uh, available for a while now. So there are plots available that way. And Stephanie, this, I know this is outside of your realm here, but are the plots that were on Mill Street, is that right? Are they like completely, Melane, are, the, are they completely done? Yes, they're, well, I, I don't know. Our, we had one final gardener who had been there for a very, very, very long time. Um, but I do believe, um, I, I'm not sure what the, the last communication with her uh, was regarding moving out of that space. But, but everyone else is gone from Mill Lane. So, um, okay. and they'll, they'll be offered, um, they'll sort of have first dibs at plots at Fort River Farm. Some already, I think one or two may have already gone to Amethyst Brook, but anyone else's, they'll be the first ones offered a, a Fort River Farm site. Great. Um, any, any other questions for Stephanie or Stephanie, any other updates? Um, no. Although, well, one thing I will say, 
which will make um, Andra and Duane especially very happy, is that um, I think we finally have an MOU, final version of our MOU, to move the, the CCA forward. So I just got it yesterday, and I just need to incorporate the edits, and I think we have a final draft. So um, hopefully we'll get that signed, and that can that means we can engage the consultant, and we can really move this thing forward finally. I was trying to save that for our meeting, but I, I couldn't not let you both know now. <laughs> hey, Stephanie, quick question, uh, a different topic. We talked about uh, a while ago about separating compost from regular trash, and I know we had a vote. Where is that at? So I, I really don't work with the recycling and the the solid waste uh, so much. Um, but I know that there's been a group of citizens, um, um, Zero Waste Amherst, and Darcy has been very, very engaged with that group. So it might be worth um, outreach to them. And I, I don't, I don't, there's nothing new that's happened. I can say that much. I haven't heard anything okay. new about, about, about that initiative, but um, they have so many emails that it's really hard for me to keep up. Um, they, they have a lot of correspondence in that zero waste group. Thanks, Stephanie. Sure. Okay, great. So I think with that, we can move on to ECAC member updates. Um, and I think maybe I'll just kick it off because one of the things we talked about in our session last, in our retreat session last week was um, thinking about ways to kind of standardize our, our meetings and make sure our meetings are as, as useful as possible um, moving forward. And so one, one of the things that I think we threw out was, and this was at the very end of the discussion, so I don't think we've quite completely finished it. So potentially we can move this on to a follow-up item, but um, one of the things we talked about is is, potential, is during these member updates, in addition to just noting anything informational that you wanna share, um, if you have a specific project you're working on or working on a team with, giving, an, giving updates during this part of the agenda. And then if there's something um, we wanna do a deep dive on um, and have more of a deep discussion on related to your project or or anything that you raise that can be added as a official agenda item, either in advance of the, the meeting by emailing Stephanie or myself, or you can say, hey, this is going on with my project. I'd love to do a deep dive on this next week and we can add it to the agenda there. Um, so just throwing that out um, as a way to maybe kind of start to move in that direction. We do have two items I believe that we are going to do a bit more of a deep dive on today um, but if, if folks have any updates they want to give based on what we talked about last week for example I I was I've been emailing with Paul and we're setting up a meeting to kind of discuss some of the questions I raised last time about um, the kind of the best ways for ECAC to be engaged and sort of serve as a way for the town to apply a lens of climate action to to the work we're doing um, so that's in the works. Um, that's my inform informational update for you all. Um, so with that, I'll maybe pass it over to anybody else who wants to give an ECAC member update. Lara, um, yes. like to be in on that meeting too. If you could okay, yeah, I have to see, is it, Stephanie, what's the rule there? Oh, you're muted. Um, I, I don't uh, know off the top of my head. I'll just have to double check. Okay. I don't think it should be an issue, but I can check. Okay, great. Um, maybe it would be helpful if we um, just reviewed kind of where we ended up in terms of working groups um, or 
you know, where people think the, they want to put their energy and how we organized it. Because I'm not sure I remember correctly. Sure, we can, we can do that. So does anybody have a member update not related to something? So I see Dwayne and Steve with hands up here. So we'll start there and then, yeah, we can, we can do that, Andra. So go ahead, Dwayne. Great. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Uh, well, it somewhat relates to the uh, solar planning, but it, it it it's more broad. I'm I'm happy to let you know that our solar planning toolkit is is uh, has been completed and is available on our website, the Clean Energy Extensions website. Um, I don't think the chat feature works for us, so I was going to ch chat you the link because uh, um, uh, I'm not going to uh, tell it to you. But if you go to the, if you Google um, UMass Clean Energy Extension and um, look for the uh, research and initiatives and then solar planning, you can find it there. Uh, but we're um, excited to have it um, available publicly, um, and uh, um, there's stuff in there that I think will be helpful for for the work that we're going to be doing. Uh, but also for um, communities around Massachusetts and, and potentially beyond. So i um, happy to, um, for folks to take a look at that and offer any feedback um, off, offline um, beyond this meeting as well. Great, that's exciting, Dwayne. I know you've been working on that for yeah. quite a while. <laughs> yeah, and, and many other people in my group, so. <laughs> yeah. I, there will be a link in the minutes to that. Oh, great. Okay. Do you uh, do you want me to email it to you, Jesse? Or you got it? Okay, great. Okay, Steve. Yes, um, I finally had a chance to talk with Mandy Joe from Town Council about the council or CRC, which is Community Resource Committee. Committee, thank you. Is, uh, they are, as you might know, um, revamping the town's rental um, permit system quite extensively. So they've got quite a plan for doing that. Coming up very soon, they hope to address the both the application process and requirements and the sustainability lens. Um, they're actually hoping to discuss that at, at the next meeting, which is May 22nd, and then the one after that, which is June 9. And so Mandy would love to have some ECAC input um, by the 26th of May, which is fairly soon if possible, um, and certainly by June 9th. Two issues at least that I can think of, and I think what I'm gonna ask is if there might be one other member, ECAC member that might want to work with me outside of meetings to develop a, a list or proposals or suggestions that either we take straight to CRC or we bring back to ECAC for discussion. But um, so that that that'll be coming up. But the questions that we that I can think of that we might want to uh, or suggestions to provide to CRC have to do with what might be included on a new rental permit application. And these are the applications that have to be filled out each year. Uh, what kind of questions might we want to see asked that would help us understand the rental stock in town? And this could be, for example, it could be asking about the age of buildings, what sort of heating source they have, if there's been renovations, and then we could ask questions about the nature of renovations, uh, the, the style of renovations, if it was replacement windows or new insulation. These are, these are things that at least would be really nice to know as we go through and evaluate the rental stock from an energy efficiency point of view. Now, whether it turns out we actually, the town wants to ask those on the rental permit every year is another issue. They may decide that's too burdensome. Um, but those, so a series of questions, we need to come up with a series of questions that we would like to know more about the rental stock and how we might get that. So that would be under the, their, their category of application process and requirements. Um, the second category that they're beginning to discuss or, or seeking input from us, ECAC, is the sustainability lens. And I think that's a little bit broader. And we have here in our previous meetings have talked about a couple of things. And the, the general 
goal of increasing energy efficiency and comfort in rental properties and reducing while reducing cost to renters. Um, and then the other one that I think we've talked about at least tangentially is see if we can might encourage or require rental properties to accommodate electric, electric vehicle charging. Those are the two that I've thought of. Well, the, 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 rental, the, the vehicle charging is somewhat new, but um, those would be the things that I would like to potentially bring to them as suggestions from the sustainability lens. So the, what CRC is hoping is that ECAC can provide some recommendations and suggestions, either in writing uh, or, and or showing up at one of their meetings to um, discuss those ideas. And then the CRC process is gonna take many more months. So it'll get reviewed, it'll go through different stages. Right now they're at the concept stage. Later on, they'll get to the writing actual language stage. Um, so there's more time to add stuff, but it'd be great to get these ideas out early. So I guess I would defer then to Laura and Stephanie if, that's, if it's feasible to allow a couple of us, two of us to work outside of meeting to develop some recommendations. Can um, I? And anybody's interested in doing that with me. Can I answer that, Laura? <laughs> yes. So again, if you assign people, you become a subcommittee and you have to post meetings. If you create something and share it with someone who may be interested, um, you can do that and you can get their feedback, but you can't, you can't necessarily meet together and have a meeting and a discussion and create something together and then bring it back to the committee, if that makes sense. I think so. so. If there's Steve, I would say, I, I don't like meetings, but I do read my emails. Okay. So it sounds like if I write something up, I can send it to at least one other person and get their feedback. So yes. Steve, Steve um, shouldn't this go through the, um, you know, building electrification accelerator team? It could if there's time for that. Um, at, I mean, at least emailing yes. the community members who are part of that. And, and working with them if they're interested, you know. Yes, for sure. Whether that happens at this stage or can happen at this stage, uh, I think there'll be plenty of time for additional input as CRC continues to solicit ideas from a variety of different groups, including community groups. Um, I think our task at the moment is to basically get some concepts and placeholders introduced to CRC so that they can begin to just sort of fit the blocks into their planning and then details will be worked out in coming months. Well, I just, I'd love to get um, Cora's input into yes. this. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just sort of courtesy to in, invite the other people who've been working on the project. Yeah, so the other people you mean, um, in, in addition to Cora, Chris, say, I'm sorry, say again. Felicia and Chris. And Chris. What is this group we're talking about? Remind me, I, I don't, it doesn't sound familiar. It was the team um, that, that formed a year ago to um, uh, uh, be a part of this um, Rocky Mountain Institute okay. building ex energy accelerator. What is it? Electrification accelerator. Okay. Yes. So is he, uh, uh, Andre, can I just clarify something there? So is your, is your thought that, because in my mind, there's two different things there. There's whether Cora has any, as, our, as a coach outside of Amherst, has any insight on things that we as ECAC should add to our list of sustainability lenses? Is that what you're thinking? Um, I just think that we have community members who've been working on this and they should be included. That, well, yeah, that, so that's that's fine, but they also have opportunities. I don't wanna overcomplicate the process. So they also have opportunities to engage with the council and CRC in other ways. So I think if, if it's a question of what does ECAC want to 
put as a sustainability lens, you suggest to the CRC as a sustainability lens, that's slightly different in my mind than no, what the, the working the rent, group was doing. Just the, rent, the rental um, piece of it. That's that's the, the main piece that they should be a part of because it was the project that developed out of that group. I'd so be happy to write something up and send group. it to them. We haven't met as a group in at least six months, but I'd be happy to send something to them for, for their feedback and their comments. And I see that uh, Anna has her hand raised. I was just um, about to say that. Okay, so she may have some insight from council point of view. Anna, you're unmuted. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I apologize. I am in an airport right now, so I hope you can hear me okay. Um, really quickly, I just want to note, you know, I think in my mind, these were, I, I'm interested to hear what you're saying, Andre, uh, Andrea, because, you know, in my mind, these were separate projects, um, the Rocky Mountain Institute and then the rental registration bylaw. So uh, I just want to note the rental registration bylaw. Um, we, this will be kind of one of the first times that ECAC has been able to engage with the council in in this way and we want to set a really good precedent and so um i think that if you all want to talk as ecac to the rocky mountain institute that's fine but i i think like laura said or steve said simplifying this process would be really great um generally speaking so if you can be if ecac can be the sole point of contact the other part is that this is so much bigger than just the ecac input that we want to make sure you all aren't um to steve's point right like this is moving quickly. And so we want to make sure your insight is, is captured in the process. So if you do want to get input from the folks at the Rocky Mountain Institute, just making sure that it's all within those timelines that Mandy Joe has put forward, um, if that makes sense. And I'm happy to answer any, any questions that might happen that might come up. But um, yeah, so this is this is a bigger process that they were going to do um, without realizing that ECAC should, <laughs> should be involved. And so we want to make sure that they um, continue to consult y'all. And this is a really great way for, for that to happen. Thanks. Sorry if it's so loud back here. <laughs> Thank you. That, that, that makes uh, perfect sense. And of course, um, Steve uh, should be the point of contact. Um, it's not actually informing RMI. Um, we, we just um, have a model here of um, that I think we should be replicating of ECAC members working with community members um, on, um, you know, teams that, that, that generate ideas and generate work. And, you know, we, we, have, we have other people who we can um, talk things through with. Um, and so that should be supported and, and maintained. And I would say that this is a part of that. Um, yeah, project. definitely talking. Talking to your community is, is so important and, and that's totally fine as long as I think it's just we want to really make sure that you all are are part of, part of the process through CRC um, and so just being very mindful of their timeline as well. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I, this is more of an internal ECAC discussion about how we work in, you know, collaboration with community groups. And, Individual. Okay, so so yeah, so right. I'd like to have I'd I'd like to finish like take that conversation maybe to another meeting, Andrea, because I wasn't aware you were all still meeting as a group, so it'd be helpful to maybe get an update on on that process. But to finish this discussion with Steve, um, so it sounds like to me, Steve, you're going to write something up, um, Jesse. It sounds like you volunteered to take a look at that over email, and I, then I, would like I guess. To yeah, I would like to also be in on that if possible. I just, as I learn the ropes, it would be useful to see this. I don't know how much use I'll be in more input, but it would be nice to see it. So just one thing about that process, just make sure if you send something to both Jesse and Lori, <clears throat> it should not be like a shared email, just send it to them both and then they can both respond to you okay. separately. I know it's cumbersome and I apologize, but again, there's a reason it's all you know, in the end, we would not like it if we didn't have transparency in the work that we do. Right. I will send it to them separately just so we don't cross our wires by mistake. <laughs> okay, great. And then Steve, sorry if I missed the timeline. So would we, is the timeline, would the timeline allow us to talk about this at our next ECAC meeting or do we need to get something back to CRC before then? 
Not if we wanted to bring it to the next CRC meeting on May 26. That will be before our next ECAC meeting. I, I think the meeting was May 22nd, but the input was by May 26th. And they were going to discuss it also at June 9th. That's what I wrote down. Yeah, but Mandy said they have a May 26th and a June 9th meeting. Um, and May well, 22nd makes no sense because that's Sunday. So maybe it was 26th. It's okay. the 26th. I think I heard the same thing, Lori, but I think Steve meant the 26th. Okay. I meant the 26th, yeah. yeah. So I guess my preference would be if, if I could get some feedback, then I could provide that to them, to CRC before our next ECAC meeting. But if you guys would prefer to see the draft before it goes to CRC, then I'll tell Mandy that we'll get it to them before the June 9th meeting. I don't feel personally that I would need to see it. I feel like I could just send you a couple of ideas and I'm very confident that you can take any ideas that come your way. I don't think I need to even respond to an original draft. I think we all have probably have some good ideas we could individually shoot out. Uh, okay, so it so sounds like um, Steve, you will share share with Mandy, and then also share whatever you send in a, in our packet next time that we can yes. look at. I'll look at. Okay, we'll do. That sounds good. Um, okay. Any other ECAC member updates? Okay, um, so, so we have two items on our agenda for today um, that came out of, one that came out of our meeting last week where we had talked about wanting to do a bit of a deeper dive on the solar planning in Amherst. Um, this was from Duane's discussion of thinking about how we can be proactive in um, pulling together materials for the working group and the consultant for their resource assessment. Um, and then Steve mentioned, e emailed after the meeting, suggesting that we also talk a bit more about outreach and education because it came up in several, um, in several ways in the retreat. So I think with that agenda item, we could also maybe, Andra, to your earlier point, kind of rehash a little bit of what the last like the last bit of the retreat discussion is on sort of where our plans and grouping it's are and then feed into the education piece um so maybe i'll start first with Dwayne, uh, and i think steve also involved with the solar planning and amherst agenda item yeah sure so this is uh, uh steve and i basically and then with uh, uh stephanie as well uh, um I think there's two main things here. One is sort of what we would, um, uh, sort of the, the vision that we have with regard to how to uh, assist um, on um, the solar planning for Amherst, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, but then also, uh, to some extent, also just an update maybe from Stephanie, but also how we, to the extent that we have the ability to um, um, Put uh, provide some input in terms of the scope of work uh, of the solar resource, uh, a solar consultant doing the resource assessment. Um, we can go over over that as well. Um, so that's sort of what we had had laid out. Um, and I think, if I recall correctly, Stephanie, you you emailed around to the committee um, a, uh, a a discussion draft of these recommendations. Um, maybe before the retreat, uh, I don't recall. Um, I think it was, wasn't it after? Or after the retreat, I, I'm- uh, They were circulated. Yeah, okay. Um, I, so I yeah. have them in, up and I could share my screen if people want to see them. That'd be great, maybe we can walk, walk through them through them that way. Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, all right. And I guess the um, 
I, I want to start with the, uh, the the top of that before getting into the enumerated bullets. The uh, the lesson enumerated the the, the character of uh, first and second um, uh, sections there um, is. Um, I think one thing that, that's not really in, in the purview of the solar consultant, but uh, more so ourselves, um, is um, uh, in in the past and maybe about a year ago, uh, both Steve and I independently became came to similar conclusions uh, with regard to you know how much solar we thought was going to be needed for to cover the load, the electric load of the town uh, of the full town in in, uh, in in of Amherst. Um, I think we did sort of with without and also with the universities and colleges. Um, but I, I one question I do have for this group and maybe um, is is um, you know that's going to be a very important calculation and something we want to um, refine and, and get up to date as much as possible. Um, part of this is also looking at our electric load today, uh, but then also through some assumptions uh, in terms of market penetration of, of um, electrification, uh, what these electric loads may grow to be um, over the course of um, the next uh, couple decades. Um, I think that's stuff that I'm happy to take a take a, a first crack out and crack at and then um, uh, work um, with with uh, um, bring back to the to the committee. Uh, to to review and get some input on, uh, but I one one question I do have maybe for the group is is um, uh, advice on <clears throat> uh, any updates or or suggestions of where we might get updated information on our electric load for the town um, and what we what at least I looked at before was the um, last greenhouse gas inventory. Uh, which may not, which may be the best data we have, and it's actually not bad data at all. Uh, but it's um, remind me, Stephanie, is it twenty sixteen or something? Do, do you remember twenty sixteen data? Yeah, yeah twenty sixteen data. So it's it's uh, you know a, a bit dated. Uh, I'm not sure if these things change too much, uh, but they may. Uh, so it'd be um, um, uh, a question of whether there's any additional data. Uh, updated data. And I, the only thing I'm thinking of is whether <clears throat> um, Andra or Stephanie, you know, whether the CCA uh, either has or uh, plans to uh, have access to better uh, community-wide electric data, um, uh, electric usage uh, for the for the town. I, th I think that's a goal. <laughs> Not any <laughs> right. We okay, don't. Yeah, once... we won't have it by next year, but eventually. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay, because that, if I recall correctly, that is a part of the process of once you get a CCA set up, is um, being able to get access to that data um, on an aggregated basis, at least uh, divided by uh, you know residential, commercial, industrial. So, that would be actually really helpful. I I, I think at this point we'd probably stick with the. Uh, uh, the greenhouse gas inventory um, as their baseline or current current data, uh, but then update update this uh, when we get the uh, data from the CCA. But I don't think we need to. We don't want to wait for that. I'm sorry, Dwayne. Just before you go on, just in terms of accessing information, I just want to say that we are going to be looking to update the greenhouse gas emissions inventory and hiring a fellow in probably hiring them in December to be doing the work in summer of 24, no, okay. 23, oh, just so, so you summer. know. So okay. next summer, so, so basically next summer we'll be updating the GHD inventory. So there'll be some data then that we'll have a fellow working on. So I don't know the timing may work. Great. Um, yep. I don't think it, I, I don't think we want to wait till next summer. I, I think this will be yep. stuff that we want to get going ahead of that for sure. Uh, but okay. Um, okay, and then the um, um, we wanted to go over sort of uh, um, some recommendations that Steve and I came up with with regard to um, how we would want to um, uh, these these uh, set of bullets here of um, uh, recommendations uh, or recommended questions for the town 
uh, for the solar assessment to address uh, from, from this uh, consultant. Um, and um, uh, the, the idea was to um, uh, ideally that we would have this resource assessment done before the solar, solar uh, zoning bylaw is completed. Um, uh, that being said, I think they're gonna be at least probably going on in parallel to some extent, uh, though any completion of the bylaws is, is, is at the end of the process. So maybe the solar assessment's done before the solar bylaw, uh, which I think is, uh, would be the appropriate um, steps um, or sequence. Um, and I guess the, the, uh, this is our sort of list um, of, uh, of recommendations to sort of scope out the consultant study um, and uh, uh, really looking at sort of how Amherst might plan out uh, and, 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 and think about the scale of its solar development and where that may go. Uh, so uh, the, the first sort of recommendation is for the consultant to uh, do a, a, a technical and then economic uh, potential in terms of how many megawatts of solar uh, that could be installed in various different um, uh, built environments and, and uh, uh, already disturbed environments. That is, uh, what, what is the potential uh, capacity for solar on our uh, residential rooftops, our larger rooftops, parking lots, um, the landfills and brownfields. This would obviously also be uh, in, in, uh, in in include an inventory of what's already been installed. Um, I will say that I uh, from from my own work, um, I, I I'll be able to through the state databases um, come up with a, uh, a a quite accurate um, accounting of all the solar of different sizes and and um, uh, um, uh, sites uh, being being residential or commercial or land based. Uh, we'll be able to come up with that fairly uh, quickly from the state databases um, of how many megawatts have already been installed in Amherst in these various different categories. Uh, but but um, but this uh, consultant would then be able to broaden that out <clears throat> to look at more uh, more broadly across the whole town uh, is the recommendation uh, both on on these built environments. Um, and I think maybe to talk uh, just uh, differentiate a little bit between technical and economic potential uh, and consultants do <clears throat> um, sort of work under work in, in this area. Technical potential is really about, you know, if you at, at uh, uh, if cost was no op, no, no barrier, how much solar could you uh, really put on the roofs uh, uh, or, or the parking lots and so forth in these different categories. Uh, you'd probably screen out <clears throat> for uh, roofs that are, um, uh, you know, over a certain amount of shading or oriented in the completely wrong direction and so forth, uh, but looking really at what the technical potential is of what you could at, at uh, with, without a cost consideration. Uh, and then the economic potential would, um, would really scrub that down a bit, uh, looking at uh, and scrubbing out um, locations where economically uh, the costs would, would suggest they were too high, uh, too high uh, or that the orientations were too off uh, to really merit the um, installation of, of, of solar. Um, I would say on the resident, and Steve, you may have more uh, experience with this. My, my sense is that on the residential level, there's you know, too many roofs, uh, residential roofs in Amherst to um, go one by one uh, with, the, with the budget that one would have. Uh, so that's really done more uh, by, um, uh, um, uh, fairly established um, uh, percentages of, of roofs that tend to in, in, in the Northeast uh, with our sort of type of building stock. Uh, there's some data to, to uh, provide some re reasonable guidance of what percentage of, of rooftop, residential rooftops uh, would tend to be economically feasible for solar. Uh, so that would be more of a formulaic type of approach. But for any of the uh, more substantial rooftops, my sense is that a consultant could go, especially because there's not that many in Amherst, uh, could go uh, one by one to um, uh, scope each of these out. Um, and likewise with the, with the parking lots and so forth. Um, uh, and then second is, is uh, uh, similarly is to look at that, uh, uh, the uh, potential for um, 
uh, solar PV installations on open and undisturbed land. Uh, how much of that is available in Amherst that, quali that currently qualifies for the Massachusetts SMART program. Uh, there are uh, categories of land that are not eligible for SMART development. Um, and um, uh, so those would be scrubbed out. Um, and um, uh, again, we, we, we're, we're gonna, be, the idea is not to really look at this parcel by parcel, uh, but to, for the consultant to come up with some um, uh, scale of, of, of uh, looking at this across the town using GIS layers to then come up with um, uh, land area and hence megawatts of solar that could be, uh, could be uh, installed in these areas that would, qual would qualify for the SMART program and to break that out uh, into different categories of land, uh, be them uh, farms or forests or um, uh, pastures or golf courses um, and, and so forth. Uh, and to break that out also with regard to um, how much of that land tends to be in private versus municipal versus state ownership, if there's any. Um, so that would give a, a um, sense of, of the, of the um, uh, site potential for solar development, uh, both on the built environment and the um, undisturbed environments. Um, and then um, the, the third recommendation is then to um, um, is to um, look at these different categories of solar uh, installations, uh, be them on rooftops, parking lots, or open land in various different categories, uh, and to come up with uh, their characterization, characteristic costs uh, in terms of how much does it cost dollar per watt uh, or dollar per megawatt of, uh, of installation in these different categories. Um, I think part of this resource assessment and solar planning is to figure out um, these trade-offs associated with potentially um, arguably uh, better uh, siting options with regard to um, uh, disturbed lands, uh, disturbed sites, uh, but also uh, always keeping in mind the trade-off with, uh, with regard to additional cost, extra cost. Uh, to put solar in um, on um, on rooftops or or parking lot canopies, for example, um, and then the, the the fourth recommendation is then um, uh, really to look at the um, and I'm trying to <laughs> remind myself here um, is is um, marrying together uh, the the prior work that we did. That, that we, we did as, as ECAC here to sort of suggest, okay, here are the, here's the, the uh, electric load that we need to meet, um, that, that, it, 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 that to meet for the, for the town of Amherst, uh, or what are, what are the various scenarios that, the, that um, we wanna look at uh, and present to, uh, uh, that ECAC wants to um, uh, sort of present and have the consultants work with us on uh, in terms of uh, uh, of what the goals are for the town uh, with regard to hosting uh, solar within the the, uh, the boundaries of the town, uh, and this is where our electric um, load uh, projections uh, come into play. Uh, so you know, uh, uh, a couple of different um, scenarios that we we might look look at is um, uh, how much solar. Uh, do do we need in terms of megawatts if we're going to meet um, the uh, our own needs uh, within Amherst? Uh, how many megawatts would be required to meet the electric loads uh, of the of the town? Um, a second scenario might be similar, but the electric load for the town after we go through some um, significant um, electrification of our heating and transportation, uh, and then a third, which may be a different goal and different perspective, uh, and there may be others, uh, these are just examples, uh, but another conceivable one would be looking at um, uh, not so much our own load, uh, but looking at, Mass at at Amherst as one of the uh, 300 some towns in, in, in the Commonwealth, and uh, uh, what would be a reasonable, uh, how much would we have to host or want to host if we wanted to, to host our 
quote unquote fair share of solar in our town. Uh, and what we mean by fair share is open for discussion, obviously. Uh, but one metric of that could be, for example, um, by, by land area. Uh, so if the town, if the, if the Commonwealth has a goal of so many megawatts or gigawatts of solar by 2050, and that's equally divided by land area across the different towns, that could be one metric. Uh, and we could calculate then our fair share of solar to host in Amherst. And we, that would be another megawatt figure we could look at. Uh, and the idea would then be to marry uh, together, join together the, the, uh, our, our, our consumption, our electric demand uh, usage, uh, and then um, uh, given the, the resource assessment of the different sites, siting opportunities for solar within the town, built environment, unbuilt environment, uh, what are the um, different um, potential outcomes in terms of um, siting uh, for each of these different scenarios of, of how much solar we want to site, uh, what would be, um, there, there, there's many different ways you could, you could uh, place that solar around these different uh, 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 sites that we have available, uh, though some of the, some of the, 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 each of those scenarios have different implications with regard to uh, how much undisturbed land we might have to take up uh, whether we have enough parking lots and rooftops to, to accommodate what we need, how much has to go on undisturbed, uh, undisturbed lands potentially, and what are the different costs associated with the different um, uh, patterns of, of solar development uh, to accommodate the goals that we, the scenario goals that we set in terms of the megawatts that we want to be able to cite, uh, and to come forward with a set of, of um, uh, recommendations or at least out uh, potential outcomes of, you know, here's for different uh, goals that we want to set. Here are um, potential ways that that amount of solar could be sited in, in Amherst um, uh, over different types of uh, siting opportunities, rooftops and land. Uh, 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 and here's a, a, fair, it's a, a range of different ways that could be done, uh, each of which may have different characteristics with regard to how much undisturbed land we might have to disturb uh, and how much uh, how what the cost differentials might be between those different um, uh, layouts. So that was the uh, that's sort of what we laid out here in these uh, in sort of this uh, planning um, idea. Um, and um, let me ask Steve if he has anything to add or Stephanie, and then we can uh, open it up for sure. Maybe I'll just overview quick summary here. So there's two asks. The first one is just sort of a go ahead from ECAC for Dwayne and me to develop scenarios that we would be, these scenarios that he discussed that we would bring, bring back to ECAC for further discussion. That's sort of the first ask. The second ask is that ECAC sort of approve those four questions that we would like the solar study, the town funded solar study to address. So these would just be our suggested questions one, two, three, four, as, uh, as you see on the screen there with, with any modifications that folks might have today. Yeah, thank you. Jesse has his hand raised for a question. Uh, first question, uh, I, of the four questions, that, uh, the, I think the question is, is this an appropriate place to also look at ownership models? Because to me that, that feels very important. I think I'd be more excited about a big solar installation in next to my house if if I was, uh, you know, a member of that in some way had had a, a, some skin in that game. Whether well as if it was a corporation that was coming into my town and putting this, and extracting those kilowatt hours and selling them somewhere so someone can do something that feels less good as an example. And then the second is. If it's helpful, I have a, two quick images that show just a snapshot of what this scale is based on the Steve's rough numbers, um, which I could put up on the screen quickly. I think just to help all of us um, to um, to see loosely what we're talking about, just to because I think a big part of what we can be doing as a committee is giving people 
visceral senses of what some of the more technical conversations look like. So this is our the entire town of Amherst, and this yellow dot in the middle is the I think 335 acres of solar that may be the right number, may not. I'm not challenging that, but that's about how big it is. And then quickly I'll show you if you were to then zoom in and see that circle. This is downtown right here where my cursor is, if you can see that. And these three blue things are, um, one is a, the big Y parking lot, one is the town common and one is the high school roof. And just to get like kind of a quick visceral sense of well, how many big Y, it would, it would take a, almost a hundred big Y parking lots to get that 335 acres. And there's a lot of calibration that's not happening in this drawing. Like, like the fact that a rooftop has less, might have less power density or the, all kinds of things, but really loosely to see, um, for me, the one that really helps is like, okay, about 150 town commons worth of solar. Like that's something I'm starting to, I'm start, I like to try to start to get these um, gut checks on what some of the, because megawatts, that doesn't, acres, that might not mean something to people, but 150 town commons, that might help uh, with the conversation. I, 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 I really appreciate that, Jesse, and, and like that visualization. Um, and that is um, that type of, of um, um analysis and then looking at how that might be distributed in various different ways that circle obviously one option is just to build one big circle uh, <laughs> maybe over maybe over the town i don't know uh but the other you know but if you start breaking up that circle as you say then and you're talking about 200 big y parking lots or whatever uh but how does that um to the extent that we don't have 154 commons and we don't have uh, 200 big wide parking lots but we do have some if we if we break that up you know how much uh, I, I think you know a, a big question is how much is how much can we affordably get on the built environment and what's left over uh and where and 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 uh of that part that's left over uh what are not not necessarily we don't want to like say it should go here here and here but sort of what are the types of parcels that are are um uh sort of the the um uh, the, the, the uh, most um, appropriate um, uh, um, uh, or available and, and appropriate to, to uh, install the rest if that's the direction that we want to go in. And quickly, the ownership is, is this? Oh, yeah, let me, let me mention the ownership. ownership. Yep. It um, may not be. I'm not, I'm not um, I, I will say that in our town, in our solar planning toolkit, uh, which which I talked about earlier, there's a whole component on ownership uh, there, uh, which I, I think is really um, enlightening and important uh, and actually has gotten a lot of interest by people that we've talked to. And there's a big difference uh, in economic value to the community um, if you can if, if the community can own it uh, as opposed to third party. So that is uh, is a component here, I think, as Jesse suggests it also impacts people's willingness to accept solar in the community. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think that is part of this planning. I'm not. I, I, I'd uh, open it up to the group in terms of whether that's a follow-up step in terms of now that we know how much and where it might go. How do we think about ownership and and uh, and 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 planning this out in, in, in that regard? Uh, or whether it should, uh, it also interacts with the um, CCA, for example, uh, potentially. Uh, and so um, I think that should be part of it. I'm just not sure that the sequence um, uh, of, of that part of it. Andra has her hand raised. <clears throat> um, so two things that um, maybe it's conversations um, among, you know, as, as a, a ECAC committee, but maybe um, it, it fits under, you know, maybe this number five and six. Um, one is um, the considering the um, 
CO2 impact of different scenarios. You know, we, we know that we have some uh, citizens who are interested in us looking at that and considering that as a part of the whole. Um, and the other is um, something that we have to talk about within the CCA group as well, but I, I think it would be really good if the ECAC would talk um, about the renewable energy credits and what does it mean? And, and if we're really counting um, our, how much we're offsetting our energy use, um, we have to grapple with the reality of, of the, the market system that is um, solar energy credits. So that's a, a future conversation I look forward to us having and um, don't know how it fits. I would say that these four questions are really for the, at this stage, are for the consultants doing the initial solar study. And I think they're big asks of the solar study uh, of the consultants, and I'm not sure they're going to have the resources to even answer all of these. Um, but these would be, this is what Duane and I consider to be really important data to help with those next questions, which are ownership, which are how do you do the recs, what are the carbon benefits. Um, so I would see those questions as being informed by these. But what we're asking here is, you know, do we want to? request that the solar study consultant team try to address these questions. <clears throat> and then we work with the data and the answers that they provide to answer the next set of questions that come up. That, that makes sense for me. Um, I, I like the questions Andrew, Andrew and I asked, but in that context, yeah, let's not let's not give them twenty questions and get no answers. Give them four good questions, and get maybe one answer. So I like it. Good, good, good approach. Yeah, and I, I think uh, yeah, and I appreciate Steve you you phrasing it that way um, and, and the sequence because um, and keep in mind that the consultants have certain special uh, you know areas of expertise, and it may not be um, ownership, <laughs> uh, different uh, different uh, options for ownership, and it may not be carbon accounting of of, of uh, forests and and um uh and steel uh and, and that stuff that i think would come uh come after we after we have the data that's presented by the by the consultants okay so um i, I think what i'm hearing is you know, I think we have a good a good start at questions. I think there were some other points raised around CO two account. I mean, this is this is this is a bit of a wish list of what we want to have happen. And so I think the first step is figuring out what the consultants can actually do, and then the second step is figuring out based on what they within their scope of work, given the funding that they've received, what we might want to try to build in. I think prioritizing, you know, what we think to Jesse's point, you know, our community needs to help us come together as a community and understand the scale of this, understand the implications and like, you know, come together. And I think that's what, that's, that's what we're gonna try to do. And my understanding is that that's what ECAC is gonna try to do, right? Figure out what we can add to this work that would supplement this, the work that the consultant has funding for. And then what can we do to help like I know we, we've talked about with the scenario analysis, for example, like what do we need to do? Who do we need to get together? Obviously it will be an open meeting. It's not gonna be an internal discussion, but who do we need to get together to really hash out? Like what are the right scenarios in terms of Amherst's share of solar? Um, and I'm, I don't know if I know the answer to that, but I think, and maybe it's within the working group as well. And we just provide ideas to the working group. I'm not sure the right approach, but that feels like something that we need to, 
sort of coming up with some agreement among the, the active, active folks in this discussion on that question would go a long way. And, um, and, and um, you know, I'd be happy to work. I think I can work like with Steve <laughs> together uh, in, 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 in some way uh, to come up um, with some um, ideas and, and, and maybe some initial data and thoughts to, to flesh us out a bit more for ECAC to, to, to review in terms of what these scenarios might look like. Um, you know, what, as I'm thinking about, it, I'm also, you know, thinking about the 2050 decarbonization plan. And, you know, we do have to keep in mind, you know, this idea that we need to generate all the energy we need our, within our town um, is we need to, we need to evaluate that. Um, that's one, one, that may be one goal we might want to look, look at, but to the extent that the decarbonization plan anticipates large amounts of offshore wind, uh, which is obviously in nobody's town, um, but we all share that. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe it's not necessary that every town has to generate its own share, its own enough, enough renewable energy for its own needs, uh, because then the offshore wind doesn't go anywhere. It isn't needed. <laughs> and it is. Um, and so, uh, you know, that might be thinking about generating enough in our town for our own town use, maybe an up, maybe, maybe, maybe something we think about as an upper bound. Um, uh, but then, uh, but then look at other scenarios about sharing, you know, a, a fair, a fair, sh a, our fair share of the offshore wind that's ex expected, for example, that would reduce the amount, that amount that we would need to generate ourselves. So, yeah, I think it would be helpful to have a first stab at some ideas there. Um, but I think we also need to answer the question of who we need who we need to get together to have that discussion and, and is it an, is it ECAC having an open meeting you know having a I don't know we just need to discuss about what the right forum for that would be and how we move that forward in in a in the right way I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that I guess my thought is that ECAC should and can come up with a couple of scenarios and I think Dwayne can develop those I'll provide comments and, and then ECAC can discuss at an open meeting and we will, you know, we will own and recommend those particular scenarios. And I hope other groups in the, in the town and the community also create some scenarios of their own. And then those will go to the working group and the working group will look at all of them and sort of pick and choose which, um, which scenarios they want to emphasize. And the, the thing about scenarios is you're looking for the boundaries. You're, you're not trying to predict the future. You're just trying to see what, what's the range of, of needs or the range of options. So I would say ECAC should, ECAC should recommend, develop and recommend scenarios <clears throat> in a public meeting. They don't have to represent the community they can represent ECAC and our, yeah. based on our, our knowledge. And I would say that um, a lot of what we want to do in terms of engaging community happens through our outreach and education and not um, actually, you know, it, it's like we can take a piece of this solar uh, question, we don't have to give everything to the work group. There, there's, there's roles for us to play in terms of facilitating some um, coming together, learning and um, you know, input. Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense, Andre and Steve, but I, I think I agree with Steve that ECAC should probably come up with some some of our I, I think we need to come up with some ideas too so that sounds like the first the first step and then so maybe I could ask Dwayne and Dwayne to draft something send it to Steve to review and if anyone else wants a separate email to review please reach out to Dwayne and then Andra maybe if you I don't I don't want to put you on the spot but if you want to come next to our next meeting um 
and thinking about like what kind of, and this is a segue, I think, into our next discussion point on educational, education outreach. If you want to come with any thoughts on how we might do that, like what, what kind of forum or, or, or ways we might want to try to supplement whatever, I don't think it's with it. Well, I don't know. I don't, I, I can't speak to what the work group is going to do. So, um, and actually that's a question, Stephanie, is that work group officially finalized? No, it's, okay. it's in process. Okay. Um, so I think for the next meet, Dwayne, do you think this is something that you could pull together ahead of the next meeting? Uh, the next, uh, like two weeks from now? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll try to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just let us know if not, but it, but for now okay. we'll tentatively put it on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Any and, last thoughts on this? Did, did we cover everything? Or I heard somebody, sorry. Well, I guess I wanted to ask if, if ECAC uh, sort of approves the, the, those four questions that we are recommending to the consultant team that they address. And if they're gen general head nodding, then and no objections, then Stephanie, are you able to transmit those four questions to the consultant team or should Dwayne or I draft no. a, a letter? No, it, it's, it wouldn't be in the letter. I think we'd probably want to find a way to draft these into the scope of work, which will be being developed very soon. And, um, you know, again, it's it, their recommendations you all are providing to the consultant, but ultimately, obviously, the, the town manager will have to take a look and the town has to be okay because we also have a limited funding Remember, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but $75,000 isn't actually for the scope of a study that we're looking for. It's very limited. So we all, you know, you all may also want to look at those and prioritize what are the ones that really should float to the top. And it might be something that you and Dwayne sort of uh, agree on what those might be and get those to me sooner than later. Well, it'd be my preference that ECAC makes these four recommendations and sort of officially acknowledges that these are the questions that we would like to see addressed and, and acknowledging that they may not be addressed. And then we learn later on, once the town has worked out the scope of work, you would come back to us, Stephanie, and say, well, they can do you know, three out of the four. And we say, great. And then we might, ECAC might figure out a way to get that fourth one addressed in some other manner. But for I now, guess... I'd love to have it on record that ECAC is requesting that these four questions be considered by the consulting team. Absolutely. And they can be, like I said, they can be something that we can sort of include initially. What, and as you know, Steve, from working with consultants for yourself, once we engage the consultant, there's typically more discussion and yeah. more refining about what they're looking at. So even if we sort of put something out there and the consultant responds to it and we choose a consultant, there may be either expanding or narrowing as we engage them. So I just want to be clear that even if a scope, even if an RFP goes out, because it may it may not be able to wait for your timeline. Quite honestly, at this point, in terms of getting the um, getting the RFP out, because the working group will be engaged, and I think we don't. If we wait too long, then the assessment is going to fall behind the work of the solar bylaw working group. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think we want to get, I think we can, that's why I'm saying if you can sort of work together, get your questions and prioritize, and maybe you do this um, by your next meeting is what I would suggest. Well, because I'm quite frankly, for, yep, go ahead. I'm asking the ECAC to approve these four questions now. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. we have a motion and I'd like to second it. Okay. okay. All right. I didn't hear that. So. All right. Then I, I so move that. Who, who ECAC, made the motion? I am. I will make it now. Okay. Is that is that okay? And, Sorry, but can, I have a clarifying question, Dwayne. Um, you mentioned that you're going to use the data from six years ago uh, as a starting point. Uh, well, and, and this would be, these would, this would not be, this would be something that we would do apart from the consultant. So it's not really part of this consultant scope of work. Uh, but yes, uh, the idea was to, uh, on, on the data, the best data available at this point in time with regard to how much electric 
energy the whole town of Amherst uses is based on 2016 data from the uh, greenhouse gas inventory. Okay, I, I was just wondering if it's worth extrapolating to current day based on usage or from a community standpoint, is it worth, and I don't know if we can do that, send out a survey to the community, uh, get a sample set and use that to understand what the 2022 demand is. I was just thinking from a community standpoint, is it worth asking that question so they I think are aware? Yeah, I'm not, I, I, don't think, I don't think we'll get better data doing a, a small survey. Uh, what I would probably do is look at, uh, and I'm not sure if there's updated data from the state, but to the extent that the, the, the state trend for electricity has either gone up or down or stayed the same, I might just extrapolate Amherst similarly. Um, but um, my sense is that electricity has stayed pretty, pretty much the same. Um, there's been efficient, there's been economic growth, but there's been efficiency. Uh, so, um, uh, and there hasn't been a whole lot of electrification yet, but, but I, I can look at, at that and try to do the best to come up with a, uh, uh, with reasonable data. But I think within the precision that we're talking about, it's probably not, not, not so bad. And I was also going to suggest that you can also, the utility may be able to provide data in aggregate. Um, so on request from like ECAC or something or the town manager? No, from the town. No, from the town. It wouldn't be through you. I mean, yeah. if the consultant is working on this, we're working with the consultant. That's how okay. we can outreach to the utility to get some some data. So, um, you know, I think that's an option, too. OK. So I will read a, a motion that, that I move that ECAC recommend this language and I can share my screen with it. Um, share screen, think and think that ECAC recommends that the town funded solar assessment address the following questions. And those four questions that we have been looking at. I second it. Do we do a roll call? Sure, why not? <laughs> Stephanie? Uh, yeah, sorry, I need to see you all. Steve, can, um, do you need to have these up or? Um, I do not, I can see them. Does anybody else um, have any questions on these before we I stop sharing? Okay. Okay, so. Um, Please make sure you're unmuted when I call your name. Uh, Selman? Yes. Allison? Yes. Breger? Yes. Roof? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Bragavan? Yes. Rose? Yes. And Drucker? Yes. OK. Okay, great. So um, I think that ends that agenda item. I'm just pulling up my my notes here. So I think as a starting point to get to move into the discussion on education and outreach, um, I forward I sent everybody last night um, some of the notes from the retreat, and I I can't pull them up, but if maybe someone else can, we could school. Um, we could scroll, scroll to the last bit, sorry, um, which is the summary. And this is something we talked about out loud, um, but we, that I, but I may not have everything right. So um, I'd like to go through this with you a little quickly. Um, sort of, I, I put um, all of our ideas into sort of three different buckets. One bucket being education and outreach with some shorter term ideas. Um, one being a potential forum on the climate road, the Massachusetts climate roadmap, potentially with um, you know, the, the other climate activist groups in town as a way to sort of have a scaling impact. Um, of course, it would be open to it would be open to anybody, but we would, you know, try to make sure that they were able to attend. And maybe that's a place where we could build in some of this discussion on the solar scenarios. Um, but I don't know if anybody wants to lead on that. I know Stella was gonna con con 
connect with T with TAC on some transportation ideas she had, and then the meeting with Paul, which I already talked about. And then longer term, we talked about some forums with other groups that can also have a similar scaling impact. So meeting with commercial heating companies to talk about, you know, how to make sure they're ready for their transition to, to heat pumps. Um, companies with truck fleets to talk about electrification, building owners who could benefit from CPACE. Sorry, I don't have it spelled the right way there. I think Don, you were gonna connect with bid as a starting point for that for those conversations. And then I think there was an, there was a couple ideas around partnering with other groups. Um, and so I thought maybe Basu, that could be something you could you could lead on. Um, you know, you had mentioned the UMass Alumni Association. Perhaps there's other ongoing events or things that are happening in the community that we could make sure we attend or, you know, have presence there so folks know that we're, we exist and what we're doing. Um, so then the second the second chunk was just sort of these larger research projects and initiatives. And some of them do, like, as we were just discussing the solar project, you know, some of them are going to be education, you know, have education. I think all of them will have education pieces and all of them will likely have policy pieces like the rental housing um, questionnaire that we discussed earlier um, or potentially other levers that we can use. And I think we had sort of three general buckets here, improving the sustainability and resiliency of rental housing, Steve and others, um, and we can, if folks want to throw their names in on that. Um, the solar project um, with Dwayne and um, Steve, but also Stella offering to provide some GIS skills. Um, and then the residential heating idea, um, looking into things like block power and supporting the matchmaking for homeowners that Lori and Andra mentioned. And then this third bucket is, is, is something that I added after the fact, because I was reflecting on the meeting and realizing that, you know, I think Andra, you raised a point about us um, engaging on the gas moratorium discussions. Um, we had the public comment and email from from Tony Cunningham about the school building. We there's I, I am on the BEA email list and I saw something go by about something else they were looking for for community support on related to gas. So um, these things kind of come up in in like floods and droughts. <laughs> like sometimes we have a lot of these types of things, other times we don't. Um, but it, it, it struck me that maybe there's, we should identify one person or two people that sort of take the lead on taking these, these, these ideas and requests and either funneling them through the committee as needed or, you know, deciding or like basically leading discussions on whether this, these are something that the committee should react to or not. Um, so, so those were the three, the three buckets that I, I pulled together. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions or thoughts on that. Um, hey, hey, Laura, I, I, I guess oh, that's is, sorry, you're having your weird voice again. Yeah. It's like every time at five, at 6 p.m., I feel like. <laughs> Got to say that was a really good weird voice. That was the best I've heard so far. <laughs> How about now? The bass kazoo. I don't know why. Yes, much better. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think there's so many different opportunities, and and I think you brought up a few ideas. We talked about some ideas last time. I wonder if it makes sense for everybody to send me a list of what they think is uh, can be an outreach and education opportunity. I'll compile compile it for our uh, discussion in two weeks if you want. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. And yeah, but so I think it'd be great. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. And I think maybe we could also, Basu, would you be willing if, because I think each in, each of us individually has different um, networks where we find out about different events that may or may not be. Um, relevant. So perhaps we can also send you those, those as well, as ideas of maybe groups we might want to connect with or, or, or things like that. Yeah, a list of names, email addresses, and, and uh, different committees. Yeah, okay.
Yeah, Don. Yeah, hi. I just need to apologize to everybody. I have another meeting that's starting momentarily, so I have to leave. Um, I let Stephanie know, but I didn't let the rest of you know. So um, assign me to whatever you want to assign me to. Look at that. See? Um, and just let me know by email. Sorry. Sorry about that. Thanks. Thanks, Don. Uh, Steve. I was just uh, going to respond to your remark earlier, Laura, that yes, I would be interested in doing um, education outreach on the Massachusetts Climate Action Plan and the 2050 goals and kind of keep it at a fairly high level and basically say, if we want to try to meet those goals and stop burning fossil fuels, here's the big picture of what we need to do. And I think, I think that information is really crucial to people to be able to understand and internalize that before we get to bigger discussions about um, solar siting and, and town's responsibilities. So I'd, I would love to do that. I've, I've got that presentation that I did back in November. And if people like that, I'd love to get feedback on it. I'd be happy to do that with other groups, um, both targeted to other um, community groups, specific community groups, or even public public events, say, you know, sponsored at the Hitchcock Center or even through Hampshire College. Um, I'd love to get some help with that and feedback and, and, and improve it. And if people want to team up and, and do it together, or if somebody wants to present it instead of me, I'd, I'd be happy to help support that as well. But I think that's the big need, helping people understand the scale of what we need to do to reach our goal of uh, the 2050 goals. I'll, I'll put that in, in a note and send that to uh, Vasu. I've been meaning to um, mention um, that uh, my son Solomon did a TED talk in Scotland. Um, I think the title is how much uh, clean electricity do we really need? And he's talking at a global level, but it really puts it into perspective. So if you Google TED Talk Solomon Goldstein Rose, you'll find it. And 10 minutes. It's, it's pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. Okay, any other um, comments or thoughts on this plan? Or any other ideas about education or outreach? Okay, so, um, well, so uh, we don't, we don't need to, prolong this if, if we're if we're feeling good about stuff. So it sounds like we have quite a few action items on our list already. Sending ideas for outreach events um, or any contact information or events that we know of that are going on to the Sioux. Um, Dwayne potentially coming back to us next time with some thoughts on scenarios. Um, Andra coming back with some thoughts on how we might help facilitate outreach on those scenarios, um, but point taken, Steve, that that might need to happen separately or after the discussion of the roadmap, because I agree that's an important piece of foundational information. Um, then I think for the, the residential or the rental stuff, Steve, you'll just include what you send to Mandy Joe as part of our packet and we can discuss that during the updates if we need to. Is there anything else I'm missing in terms of key agenda items? Do folks want to talk next week about um, the school building heating systems? I know Jesse, I think you might have attended one of the meetings and then I don't know if you've been at an ECAC since then. So I don't know if you have any updates from that. Yeah, I could, I, I, I could 
give a, a quick report back on that. Um, it sounded like what Tony, Tony, I think, was asking for might be more time sensitive than that. And I, and I think it may make sense. I think we've all seen the email and we, would it make sense for all of us? It's, it's, it's fairly, it's a little bit technical of the ground source heat pump stuff. And, and I haven't heard the rationale, what, what, why she's asking for one for ground source versus air source. Um, needless to say, we'd have to talk about it for a little while to really understand what's being asked, or we can do the research ourselves. And um, as citizens who happen to be on the ECAC, can we then I, I get, remind me, there's an ask on the table here, which I think is worth talking about if we have time now, um, more importantly than reporting back from that meeting because okay and so it, 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 it is the it, do i understand the ask correctly that she's asking that we formally ask the school building committee to include resilient um features and ground source heat pumps is that correct mm -hmm. yes and that's what she requested so it seems pretty simple to ask that they add that to the budget um, because it doesn't mean that it's being added to the project. Whereas the question of ask of going air source versus ground source heat pumps, I think is a much more nuanced question that involves the design of those systems. Um, there's, there's a lot uh, there that quite frankly, if you really want to be able to have that conversation, you'd have to watch that meeting and then do a little research on your own. I don't know if we can weigh in on that one quickly without more information. Yeah. Um, and Stephanie has got her hand up too, Laura, if you can't see that, oh, she might sorry. have something okay. even less big to say than what I'm saying. No, no, I just think, I just wanted to summarize. I think what Tony was requesting was, as you said, just advocating that those features be included in the budget scenarios because they're not being investigated. So there's no, um, no investigation of the school serving as an emergency shelter in a climate emergency, for instance, as a resiliency feature. That's not being investigated about what the costs would be to do so. So Tony was requesting that those things be included and also then about the ground source air, uh, ground source heat pumps versus air source heat pumps as well. And that those also be financially investigated. Okay, great. I see Dwayne and Andra have hands up. Yeah, I think that we should separate the two issues because they're different. Um, and I think we should discuss my my sense is that what ECAC should be advocating for is a building that doesn't operate on fossil fuels and air source or ground source. I, I, I would tend to agree with Jesse. Like, I think there's lots of nuances. I understand that the different site plans, there's pros and cons to both of those. And so I think unless somebody wants to take the initiative to really research that and then come back to ECAC with kind of a clear recommendation that either we we pick we we prefer one over the other or just simply that ECAC thinks either of those are the best options, right? I think that's something we need to to discuss decide. Dwayne has his hand up and also Andra. Yep, I was just gonna add um um the, the, and jesse you you, you uh, I, I appreciate your your insights into this as well but my understanding between air source and ground source heat pumps and, and let me first say i think they, these are two different questions with regard to resiliency and and uh, and air source and, and ground source heat pumps i'm so speaking more on the air source and ground source heat pumps i think generally for the scale of this building um from an energy perspective and a climate perspective and from a roadmap perspective, a ground source heat pump is um, 
um, highly advantageous over air source heat pumps for this scale of a, of a building. Uh, and I say that for a couple, a couple reasons. One is that the, um, the, the efficiency of a ground source heat pump system in terms of its coefficient of performance throughout the year, even in cold weather, is going to be much better than air source heat pumps. Um, um, now, it's going, to, it's going to be more costly. Uh, so similar to the conversation of fossil fuels or not fossil fuels, there's a conversation to be had in terms of is the upfront cost of more of more renewable thermal efficiency worth it uh, to avoid uh, air source uh, to, 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 to increase the efficiency, keeping in mind while we're electrifying, uh, we want to electrify in ways that reduce the amount of electricity we need because <laughs> we're going to need a lot of electricity uh, and, and uh, we need to reduce the amount of electricity we're going to be drawing, especially on those cold, cold days. Um, what yeah, I would Dwayne, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Dwayne. So the de design team has done a lot of this work. Yeah. The one thing I was so going to okay. Oh yeah, go ahead. The, the so one thing I was going to say. Yeah, we don't need to redo that. But. Okay. In terms of the budget, is that the the uh, a big part of the um, of, of uh, verifying whether the the, the efficacy and and um, cost <clears throat> of a ground source heat pump is is understanding the geology. Uh, which is um, an, an investment during the design process uh, before you make that decision of whether air source is better or ground source heat pump is better. You need to understand the geology. Uh, and so <clears throat> I think a question is whether the town uh, has the, and, and whether we would recommend that the town um, in its budget for the, des for the design process <clears throat> have enough budget to drill a test well, uh, which is not, um, insignificant. Yeah, and I, I'll just say again, Wayne, Wayne, I think you're, you're touching on two or three of 10 critical issues that would need to be understood to, to, rec to make a recommendation one way or the other. I really, I, and, and, I, and I think if we do, any one of us that want to jump into this conversation really has to go back and listen to that entire meeting okay. um, and hear what was said. There's just a lot to it. Um, which I won't go into now. Just the main point is there's only a lot to it. <laughs> so, Lori, so Lori has not, her hand up. Wait, I, I had my hand up. I just took it down okay. because I thought I was about to talk. Okay. Um, I, um, we're not, we're, we don't need to recommend. We don't need to say um, ECAC all agrees. We, we just need to say, oh, we think that you should be um, putting these considerations both the uh, cost of, you know, batteries and the cost of, um, well, they already have the comparative costs, um, but but anyhow, to put them into the budget scenarios or whatever that is, doesn't take a, a recommendation. It just takes a, oh, we're interested in you finding the most efficient um, and, you know, efficient in terms of our, our money as well, uh, solution for this. So please look into both. Can't we just do that? So they've, so, so yeah, they've already done that. So I think that the, I think on the first part, you're exactly right. So are related to the community resiliency piece. It's just about including that in the analysis. And so I think that's an easier answer I think what Tony's asking for is because she's advocate based on her op-ed, she's advocating for the Fort River site. And part of the reason is because that site is better for ground source heat pumps, according to her, her article. I haven't read the reports enough or gone, I listened to that meeting to know how, what that's based on. So she, my understanding is that she wants us to come out in support of ground source oh, heating because then that would support that site location. Uh, okay. Yeah. And I think I agree with Jesse that we don't have enough information. And I think we need to decide whether we want to spend our time doing that or whether we want to do just what you said, Andra. Like we think either of those options are good in the, in the town. This yeah. committee needs to pick the one that's the most effective over so, so then, a range of I issues. Guess... I guess I'd like to um, propose that we um, recommend that the idea of being a resilience center um, be considered. Not that we think 
you know, that's the right solution, but that it, it yeah, is. I, I see if that's a motion, then I would second that motion. All we're asking is consider it because it's not currently that's, being considered. Yeah, let's let Lori jump in because I know I jumped in in front of you, Lori. I apologize for that. Did you have anything to add? I, I think most of what I wanted to say has been said. It just wasn't clear to me exactly what stage all of this is at. But if it's a matter of considering these things, they should certainly be considering ground source uh, heat pumps and they should certainly be considering a resiliency hub. And the two, I think, do sort of go together in the sense that the ground source has the potential to be so much more efficient. You know, you, you make your whole site more efficient, you make it more resilient, right? So um, in some ways. So it's, 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 this seems important to me. And uh, depending on what she's asking us to support, uh, if we can really get some clarity on that, then uh, we might want to go ahead and do it. So, Lori, just to clarify, ground source and air source is a huge part of the conversation. They're very much being considered. Okay. I don't know if they're making one decision one way or the other, but they've done extensive um, study into short term costs, long term costs efficiency, et cetera, they're, 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 they are very much doing that. And my understanding of Tony's ask is on the other issue is they have not done anything okay. on the resilience hub and that, and that it would be very simple for us to simply say, put, could you please consider this in the budgeting exercise? Sure. Um, that's, that's my understanding of what's happened. I, I haven't gone to every meeting. I've just the one that was focused on those two technologies. They had an entire meeting dedicated to air source, ground source discussion with so the design question, team. What I, I would be inclined to support that, but then my question, my follow-up question would be, what exactly do they see as a result? What does it mean for something to be a resiliency hub? That's, that's for them that's to a, figure out, not for exactly, us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think part of it, you know, in this case, Tony was specifically identifying as an emergency shelter and that has implications obviously on the size of um, yeah. the heating and cooling systems because then you're talking about working at a greater capacity for you know longer stretches of time that kind of thing so i think that's partly why i got it it hasn't necessarily been considered because there's obviously a financial implication that would increase the price and that's yeah exactly <laughs> Okay. Doesn't mean though that it's not committing, but again, it's not committing to Tony's point. It's not committing the town to it, but it's like it's yes. it's been negated before it even has an opportunity to be considered. So I think that's all Tony was getting to, and advocating okay. for. Gotcha. Thank you. So there is a motion and a second. Any other? What is the motion for? To support. Who made? I'm sorry. Who made the motion? And where was the second? I did, Jesse seconded. Okay. What, what was the motion? The motion is to, I don't have quite the right words, um, to ask, ask. the um, building committee to have the consultants include an, in their analysis, uh, the school being a resilience hub or hmm, maybe more specifically, uh, no, I think I think leave it a resilience hub. Okay, I would support that. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So that motion is on the table. I'll do a voice vote. Selman. Yep. Gregor. Yes. Roof. Yes. Goldner. Yes. Raghavan. Yes. Rose. Yes. Drocker. Yes. Okay. Okay. So then, who wants to take? responsibility for forwarding that on to the appropriate people. Stephanie, is that something you can do or should one up do one of us need to write something up? You should write something up and then forward it to me. Sometimes that sort of thing is just put in the minutes and then the minutes can be forwarded. No, that's not, I don't suggest doing it that way. No offense, but okay. it's too easy to get lost. You could, and you should, um, I would suggest submitting this to the town manager and uh, or Kathy Schoen and cap copy the town manager. So address to Kathy and copy to the town manager. Jesse, can we nominate you to do it since you're taking minutes? I, I'd, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, the I'm I think I will 
keep the language general um, and not get, you know, not specific. <laughs> Jesse, just make sure you copy me or reach out to me if you need any, anything. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. So I think with that, we can move on to any final public comment if folks have have some. Okay, so if that's a no, Stephanie, is there anybody with hand raises? Nope. Okay. All right, great. Well, I think with that, we can adjourn for tonight. Um, oh, thank you, you do everybody. Have, sorry, oh. Laura, you do have public comment. Just one off, okay. last opportunity. So if there's uh, anyone in the, as an attendee who wants to speak, please raise your hand. Okay, no request to speak. Okay, great. Well, there's, I think with that we can. Oh, go ahead, Jesse. But there's just there's a thing here that says agenda for next time. Is that did we s decide to take that off that discussion out? Which I is fine. But I saw that uh, in the other minutes it has this little section called what, agenda for next time or something like that. I don't want to. Yeah. So um, I thought I had. I was sort of rambling. I thought I had included that in one of my rambles earlier, but yeah, um, it was covered. Possible. I, I maybe I missed it. Um, okay. So it'll be posted. You'll send it. To, that'll be fine. I, I think I just okay. didn't get it. Sorry. Okay. We, we can. I didn't think there was any. We don't need to rehash it. I don't think there was Good. any objections to it. So um, I can connect with you and make sure we have it in the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I missed it. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Okay, well, thank you everybody. Um, and we'll reconvene in two weeks as normal. So next week we don't have VCAC. <laughs> All right. Oh, what are we gonna do? Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Thanks, have Laura. a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.